New research says that flights from Britain to the US could take longer in the future because of climate change. It's apparently due to the effect it has on the Atlantic jet stream. Dr Paul Williams is an atmospheric scientist at the University of Reading and he's the man behind the study. What it boils down to is the jet stream. Um, this is a, a very strong current of air that blows at pretty much the same height that planes fly. It blows from west to east across the Atlantic uh, and it can reach speeds of 200 miles an hour. Um, and that's the reason why anyone who's ever flown across the Atlantic will know that the flight time going over to the USA or Canada is usually about one hour longer than the uh, flight time coming back over to Europe. And that's because the eastbound flights get into these rapid winds and they get a massive boost to their speed, whereas the westbound flights have to battle against these winds and that significantly slows them down. How much longer could the flight east get then? Well, that's the million dollar question and uh, we've um, been looking at some uh, calculations and some computer simulations and we reckon that the jet stream winds are getting 15% stronger on the route between London and New York. That's the iconic transatlantic route. And uh, what the simulations are showing is that eastbound flights are going to get five minutes shorter on average and, and the westbound flights are going to get seven minutes longer. Now, those are just the average figures, and they seem quite small, but there's an important difference there between the seven minutes and the five minutes. They don't cancel each other out. Uh, the round-trip journey does go up by two minutes. Those figures are for autumn. And what that means is that if you add those numbers up for all of the transatlantic aircraft, you calculate that they're going to be airborne for an extra 2,000 hours each year just because of this effect. And that's obviously going to add a lot of money, over $20 million, I reckon, to airline fuel costs. Is this a global issue, Paul, or just over the Atlantic? That's a very good question. Uh, the jet stream does go all the way around the globe. It doesn't begin and end in the Atlantic. And in fact, there's another jet stream in the Southern Hemisphere too. Um, so although I've only crunched the numbers really for the transatlantic routes in the study we're publishing today, uh, it's very plausible that the same findings will apply to other flight routes that use the jet stream, trans-Pacific flights, uh, for example, and, and flights in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe between Australia and um, South Africa, for example, or South America. We've been learning quite a lot about jet stream from our weather forecasters here in Belfast because it's been varying quite a bit and uh, what was once a straight line very often is now going in great big loops and that has a big effect on our weather. What do you think the wider implications of this speeding up of the jet stream might be? Yes, that's right. It, uh, it does a lot of things, the jet stream, and it does blow those storms uh, across the Atlantic onto our shores. Um, and there is some evidence that it's getting wavier. And in fact, at, at ground level, it might be slowing down just to, just to confuse the issue a little bit, um, and, and, but speeding up at flight levels. And there are good reasons for that. It's because the, the temperatures in the atmosphere and the winds are very strongly tied together. And if you change the temperatures, which we're doing through our CO2 emissions, uh, that sets up a, a pressure pattern that drives a, a wind. That's how the pressure and the winds are related. Um, so, uh, yes... There you go. That's Dr Paul Williams. So if you're flying to the States, you're going to get there a little bit quicker, but it's going to be a bit slow coming home because of that old jet stream.